Sean here again, and today we're going to show you how to check your compression of your engine on a Lada or any other vehicle, and explain why you should do it. Doing a compression test on engines is an easy way to tell you the basic health of the engine. It'll let you know if you've got a dead cylinder or a cylinder that's not performing quite as well as some of the others. Unless you know if you should go forward with further modifications, or if you're daily driving it, whether you should continue daily driving it, or if you should start seeking for a repair option on it. The most important thing you have to have is the compression tester. They can be picked up at most parts stores or tool supply stores. And it's a very simple piece. It's just a pressure gauge that goes up to 300 PSI with a hose and an adapter attached to it with a one-way check valve. And all it is is a valve core out of a valve stem. But most importantly, have the right size end for your spark plug hole. Step one is to first remove your plug wires and then your spark plugs. So it's quite simple, remove your plug wires. You will have to keep the order of them on hand, either marking them down or consult a manual. And once you have your plug wires removed, simply remove your spark plugs. And once you have all four removed and disconnect your coil, you don't want that thing firing and triggering and electrocuting you. With the spark plug wires in the cap of the rig, grab your 21 millimeter spark plug socket or 13 16 here in North America. Put it on your spark plug and make sure you support it nice and then just break them free and slowly spin them out. Make sure you hold and support the extension so that you don't side load the spark plug and crack one because then you're going for new parts. Before doing the compression test, it is necessary to remove the air cleaner to limit all restrictions to the carburetor. With the spark plugs removed and the air cleaner removed, we are now ready to install the compression tester. You always start at your number one cylinder. Start the first one first. Bring it down in, get it lined up, and give it a turn until it snugs up. And it has an O-ring on it to help seal, so you don't need to have them really, really tight. They're just snug is good. The next step will be to hold the throttle wide open. You have to make sure the throttle is all the way open and then crank it over for at least the count of 10. So take your assistant and get him to hold the throttle wide open and crank it over for the count of 10. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Good. And we're actually doing extremely well on that cylinder. That is 160 PSI. That is a huge surprise, actually. Next thing you have to do is to release the pressure just by hitting the little pressure release valve. Once you get her blood down to zero, you loosen her off and then thread her from the number one. Then we're gonna move it on to the number two cylinder. Darren, hit it. Okay. Wow, very good. Now we're getting ready to test number three. And one of our followers, Dana Clark, says number three is always a problem. So this will be the real test of this engine. Hit it, Darren. We're good. Oh, wow. Now we're on to number four. Hit it, Darren. Wow, we're good. That is amazing. Now let's review the numbers. As you see, our lowest number was a 160 PSI, our highest is a 170. The high numbers are nice to have. Anywhere from 120 up is usually pretty good. That's actually pretty phenomenal, especially for what this engine is. But most importantly is the fact that they're all close percentage-wise to each other. You only want about a five to 10% spread across your entire cylinder numbers. So the fact that this is at 6%, from your highest to our lowest is phenomenal. That's a very, 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 very healthy engine, which is good to know. Now that we have good numbers and we know that the engine's healthy, we can put her back together and we can go back to racing. When you have the plugs removed, it's a good time to inspect your plugs to see how they're doing and how your engine's running. You wanna have a good look at them and check them and see if there are any real darkness all in the ceramic. Make sure the ends of the electrode are not worn down or rounded off. Make sure they're not burnt up, chunks missing, anything that signifies that your engine's in trouble. If you notice, these are running pretty clean. There's no real discoloration to them. So this engine is actually running pretty ideal air to fuel ratio wise. Just a little quick note, when it comes time to install your plugs again, it doesn't hurt to put a little bit of anti-seize or a little bit of oil, something on the threads of your plugs. So when you thread them in, it doesn't foul the threading on your aluminum head. 
We have now shown you how to do a compression test on your engine. We hope this helps you in diagnosing or just general maintenance on your vehicle. Like, share, and subscribe.